Yes. Mark has been an amateur magician since he first joined the Open Magic Circle as a teenager in the 1960s. While attending UCLA in the 1970s, Mark had the honor of performing close-up uh, close magic several times at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. Although he set aside his magic hobby for many years while he pursued his career as an international lawyer, Mark never lost his interest in magic. After living for many years in Europe, Mark retired from his legal career in 2014 and returned to the Bay Area where he promptly rejoined the Oakland Magic Circle. He is very happy to have more time to pursue his magic hobby and to have the opportunity to perform for you here tonight. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mark McGuire, and let's welcome Elizabeth, who's kindly agreed to help me. Now, Elizabeth, before you came up here, I didn't tell you exactly what we would be doing, did I? No, no. Okay, well, lately, I have been playing around with extra sensory perception. You know, just giving little tests to myself and my friends to see if we could detect any uh, psychic powers. Now, would you mind taking such a test? Oh, not at all. Great. Now, I should tell you, if you do well on the test, it could completely change your mind. Okay, but in a good way, in a good way. Now, you can do these tests uh, yourself at home if you have a couple of decks of cards. As you can see, this uh, blue deck uh, is in pretty random order. Uh, you can take a look at the cards, as is the red deck. But, you know, to make sure, why don't we shuffle the cards? Okay, you can get up a little closer. And you can use any, any shuffle you like, anything you're comfortable with. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, place your deck onto the table. Now, to do the ESP test, what I want you to do is cut the deck into two piles, okay? Now, before you cut them, though, you can cut them anywhere you like, near the top, near the middle somewhere, or even near the bottom. Wherever you feel attractive, you just cut the, uh, the cards to that spot. Okay, so you cut to this card. So what I'd like you to do is uh, complete the cut so your card is on top. All right, now I'll take the card you cut to, and I'll give you one of mine, okay? Let's do it again. I'd like you to just cut the card, perhaps in a different, in a different spot, okay? And just complete the cut so the card you cut to is on top. And now I'll, I'll take the second card you cut to, and I'll give you one of mine, all right? Now, you can see this is a very simple test. In fact, you may think it's kind of a dumb test. But uh, would you mind doing it one more time? Okay. Give the cards one more cut anywhere you like. And then complete the cut. So as before, I'll take the card you cut to and I'll give you one of my cards in return. And then just give the deck one more cut and complete the cut. All right. Now, before uh, we see how you did, I want to ask you one question. Did you feel as you were cutting the cards that your hand was being guided by some kind of a force, or did you think it was just a completely free choice? I felt like it was a free choice. Just free choice, okay. Absolutely. Now, when you cut your cards, the three card cards you cut to, you gave them to me. There's one, two, and three. And the three cards I gave you in return, you had no idea what those cards were. Okay, so for the first time, I'm going to show you that one of the cards I gave you was the Four of Hearts. Now, one of the cards you gave me was also a Four of Hearts. That would be pretty remarkable, would it not? And you said that when you were cutting, you didn't feel any kind of a force that was kind of guiding your hand? All right, then we're going to have to find another explanation for this. <laughs> 
know, we shouldn't overreact because, after all, the uh, odds that you would match one of my cards was three chances out of 52, so it's not that uh, improbable. Now, the second card I gave you was the King of Diamonds. Now, the probability that you would match two of my cards drops down to uh, two chances out of 2,652, much more improbable. Let me ask you, did you realize before you came here tonight that you had this, this power? No? <laughs> You're an artist. Okay. Have you considered doing something in the stock market? <laughs> Just a suggestion. Got it. Okay, now the third card I gave you was um, the seven of clubs. Now, I've never seen this happen before, but I calculated that the odds that you're matching all three of my cards are one chance out of 132,600. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's give her a big hand for this amazing demonstration. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, those of you who are magic historians uh, may have recognized that was a triple coincidence by John Scarney from the uh, Stars of Magic. I hope you enjoyed it.